In this movie, we're going to take a look at a very cool feature of anime, which saves you lots of time when you start animating characters. And that is using constraints to animate other skeletal or bone structures in your character. Now, we've got a ballerina who's standing on one leg and then has a leg behind her. And I do want to emphasize a couple things. One is, this is not the section on how to rig a character for animation. Got some bones in here simply to influence this artwork which was created in Adobe Illustrator and imported into this file. If you have access to the instructional files or the exercise files, you can open this file directly, 0507 Ballerina, or you can go ahead and create your own file and import this Ballerina, which is in that same folder. Well, let's take a look at what's going on here. I'm also assuming that uh, if you're looking at this movie, you've gone through the ones just immediately before this, which happens to do with setting constraints and bone influences. If you haven't gone through that, please go back and check that because I won't be going in detail in this movie how to do those things. I've already engaged them. Well, let's zoom in here a little bit on the leg so we can see what's going on. What we're going to do, and that's a little too close, let me back out just a little bit. What we're going to do here is set this up with bones so that when the foot bends down, this calf muscle gets larger. And we're also going to set it up so that when the leg right here bends up, like you're, you're curling your, your calf and foot up, this muscle on the back of the leg automatically gets larger and this muscle on the front of the leg automatically gets a little bit skinnier just like real muscles do when you work with them. Let me select a bone right here and you can see that I already have constraints applied. The knee or the uh, shin down here already has constraints applied as does the foot down here. If I come over here to uh, the bone movement tool or manipulate tool, we can see that we already have some influences that have been scaled down. And if I come to the parenting tool, which looks like the little link over here, we can see that these bones have already been linked together. So we started with a hip bone, as we learned in our last lesson, and built our skeleton off of that and then relinked all the bones so they all kind of end up at the hip since the hip controls everything. Now these new little bones, the ones that are going to affect the muscles as we flex or as we move the legs, have been linked directly to the bone that they're related to. So these the quadriceps here and like these hamstrings have been connected to this upper leg here. This calf muscle has been connected to this shin bone down here or this lower leg. That said, let's go ahead and look at how we start working with these. Bone selection tool, keyboard shortcut B. I will select this bone right here, the calf bone. And now under bone constraints, we can come up here and open this window. And we can leave this window open as long as we're working with the bone selection tool. We don't have to keep closing it and reopening it each time we switch to a new bone. I am not going to angle constrain this, but I'm going to come down instead to the angle control bone. And one of the reasons I named these bones is because you have to have a name of a bone to be able to engage these functions. So I'm going to connect the calf muscle to the foot because that's how it works. The bone itself is linked to the lower leg. However, I want the influence of the foot to change how this calf muscle behaves. So I'll select foot there and we get a little option that pops up here. It usually opens up with a default value of one and you may go, what does this value mean? That's an excellent question and I wish I had an excellent answer for you. All I can say is that one and above is very significant influence. One and below is less significant. So this has been set up for 0.2, an influence of 0.2. Well, let's see what that means here. I'll close this. I'm going to select the foot bone, but I am going to change to the manipulate bone tool. Now watch what happens when I click on this foot and drag it down. You'll see the calf muscle get a little bit larger. And that's because that little bone right here that we connected to it is moving out at a rate of 0.2. So it flexes a little bit like a real muscle would. Kind of cool, huh? Let's come back to the bone selection tool, keyboard shortcut B. I'm going to select this, what would be a hamstring on this upper leg. We'll open the bone constraints window. And as this leg comes up, the lower leg comes up, this needs to move and I'm going to go ahead and connect that to the lower leg. This has a value now of 0 0.10 and I'm going to change that to 0 0.2. Actually 0.3 will make that a little more significant. If you put in a negative value, just like you do with rotational values in anime, 
Anime thinks of uh, rotation as a circle where zero is at the bottom, and the positive numbers go to the right counterclockwise, and negative numbers start from the bottom and go clockwise. Not real intuitive, but that's how it works. So this with a value of 0.3 means it's going to, this little bone right here is going to rotate clockwise from the bottom and make this or affect this line here like the, the, the muscles getting larger. Now when I select this bone on the thigh side, I want that to get smaller as this leg bends up because it would actually be stretching out. So I am also going to connect that to the lower leg. But I'm not going to give it a negative value if I wanted it to get bigger then I would want it to rotate this way and that would involve a negative value since it would be rotating from the bottom clockwise. I'm going to leave it rotating clockwise so it gets smaller just like a real one would stretching out. And I'll leave that at a smaller influence right here of 0.10. I'll select close, come back to my bone manipulation tool. Now watch this upper leg here as I go ahead and grab this lower leg bone and flex it up. Now we get some funny bends right in here and this would involve just a little bit of finessing and moving this bone around just a little bit so that it would have more appropriate influence over this line right here of the artwork. But we can see this front part of the leg, the quadricep, narrowed out a little bit and as I extend the leg down we can see the back of the leg gets smaller. But that's how you start connecting and influencing and animating your characters with constrained bones.